I found a purple marker. How sweet that is. Okay, at the end of the last video, I started talking about at what angle I said. I said, no, not till the next video. Well, now it's the next video. What would happen if, okay, okay, no, no. Let me ask you a question. You want to get, some, get a projectile, something to go as far as possible, longest distance possible. What angle would you launch it at? I bet several of you know the answer to this question. You'll say 45 degrees. And you're right. It is 45 degrees. Assuming no, no headwind or anything like that, there's, it's 45 degrees. And, but, well, why is that? Why 45 degrees? Well, 45 degrees... There's my 45 purple marker. Pretty sweet, huh? Yeah, pretty sweet. 45 degrees is halfway between 0 and 90. Now, of course, you know this. You know that if you launch something at 90 degrees straight up, it's not going to go anywhere forward, right? So clearly, that ain't going to work. And if you launch something at 0, right, like right along the ground, it's going to immediately hit the ground as soon as you launch it. So that's not going to go very far. So I guess halfway in between is 0 and 90 is 45. That makes some logical sense. But the physics explanation would be because at 45, you have enough forward velocity and enough time in the air. Remember our equation? We'll put it back up. That horizontal distance of a projectile is equal to horizontal velocity this way multiplied by time in the air, which happens to do with how far up you go. So anything above 45, you'll get a lot more time in the air, but you just won't have enough forward velocity, enough horizontal velocity. If you go too low, you'll have more horizontal velocity, but you won't get enough time in the air. So 45 degrees is a happy medium between getting enough forward velocity and enough time in the air to take advantage of that forward velocity. A punter in the NFL football um, at times, will want to hit the ball really far. They'll want to hit the ball. You know, if, if they're within the 50-yard line. They're going to punt not very far. They don't want it going into the end zone. So what do they do? They punt the ball more straight up. And that allows it not to go as far. And it also allows your coverage team to get underneath that punt because it'll be in the air longer. So we have more of what's called hang time. So, but, so you know that... That would be the case. I think most of you would know that 45 degrees would be the reason. But maybe you just didn't think about it in terms of the physics. Uh, but you got a nice balance between this and that. All right. Let's do a problem where the projectile is not launched horizontally. No, 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 no. That was the last problem. This problem, here's what we have. That's SpongeBob. He's kicking a Krabby Patty. And he's angry. You can see in the eyebrows. See the eyebrows. Okay, you can see it. See that? He's angry. Uh, you might be saying, that's not Spongebob. Spongebob would never kick A, a Krabby Patty, and B would not be angry. Okay, maybe it's Doodle Bob. Remember him? Yeah. The evil Spongebob. Yeah, it's Doodle Bob. He's kicking it. Okay, we can accept that. Okay. So he kicks the Krabby Patty at 100 meters per second, which you don't mess around. Remember, they're underwater, so he's not even water kicking at 100 meters per second. Whoa! Don't mess with Doodle Bob. 100 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees. Same question, how far will it go? So we're still asking the same question. What is the horizontal velocity, the horizontal distance? So I need the horizontal velocity and time in the air. Oh, it's easy because you just like in the last problem, you gave us the horizontal velocity like in the last problem and we have it here. We're gonna take 100 and put it right in there. No, Billy. Yeah. Billy gets angsty very easily, you know, angsty Billy. No, because that's horizontal velocity. Is that horizontal? No. We need to know what that is, the horizontal velocity. You see it. I've been saying they don't go away. Triangles. you got to know your triangle math. So we know that this is the horizontal velocity. This. And we need to know that. Make a triangle. This Krabby Patty is going to move forward and up at the same time when we are kicking it at 100 meters per second at 30 degrees. And that's a right triangle. This side here is horizontal. That would be my horizontal component. Again, vectors don't go away either, right? And this would be my vertical component of that vector. Now, some of you might be saying, wait a minute. 
Are you telling me that projectiles do this? They go up like that, and, and then they come back down like that, like a triangle. No, 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 I'm not saying that at all. You know that's not what they do. You know that. They do this. Okay, they don't make triangles. They make parabolas. Parabola. Okay, I don't know what a bola is, and why would you want two of them? <laughs> a parabola. Parabola. They do that. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Well, it does. What happens is this is called the instantaneous velocity. The instant we kick the Krabby Patty, it's moving at 100 meters per second at 30 degrees. Now, that immediately begins to change. This does not change. Remember, horizontal velocity doesn't change the whole trip because it's not affected by gravity. But gravity kicks in the instant that it gets a chance to after we kick it in this vertical direction. So it will go up, slow down, come to its peak, pinnacle, apex, and or zenith, and then come back down. But the whole trip across, we are going to be moving at that horizontal velocity. We'll slow down on the way up, we'll speed up on the way down, but across that VH is always VH. That's why we can solve for it and put it right in our equation. All right, so this is called the instantaneous launch velocity. It has two components. This component is going to change. This one will not. But we do need to figure out the initial launch velocity up. We need to figure that out. So let's do the math. Okay, by now I hope that you remember, I'm gonna call this, you can call it VV for vertical. I'm gonna call it VI for initial. The initial upwards velocity. It will change, but initially, there's some component that we need to know. So I hopefully by now you know that the, I'm going to use sine to find this side out. This is 30, and this is hypotenuse. So the sine of 30 is equal to VI over 100. So the sine of 30, and hopefully by now you know the sine of 30, you've done enough problems with this, um, is 0.5. So 0.5 equals VI over 100. VI equals 0.5 times 150 meters per second. So this initial upwards velocity is 15 meters per second. Initial starting. That's going to change. Gravity's going to kick in and say, my. Let's figure out the horizontal velocity. That won't change the whole trip. That will be the same, which is why, again, we can put it right in our equation for figuring out how far it goes. Okay, that's going to be the cosine, adjacent side, cosine of 30. You do the VH over 100. The cosine of 30 is 0.866. So if I take 0.866 and multiply it by 100, I get 86.6. Okay? Check it, though. Check it, check it. They should come out to be 86.6 meters per second using the cosine function adjacent over hypotenuse. All right. That won't change. I can now put that right in here. This ain't so bad. I like Mr. T. It ain't so bad. Rocky three. Because I just have to figure out my triangle math. Now, if you're still struggling with triangle math, that'd be really bad at this point. You really need to get that down. Go back to the original videos on triangle math when we were talking about vectors, and please go through those. Um, if you know your triangle math, which you should at this point, then, okay, figure out the two sides. You have had the problem done. Half the problem's done. See, you ain't so bad. So half the problem's done because now I can put this in per second, boom. I need to know what time that it's going to be in the air. Just like last problem, I had to figure out the time that the projectile will be in the air. Oh, we'll use the same equation as last time then. D is equal to VIT plus one half GT squared. No, Billy. See, Billy's getting more angry, isn't he? Getting more angsty. All right, well, no, because I don't have a distance here, do I? There's no distance involved, so I can't use that equation. Um, and we have to figure out time, so I can't use the square root equation. It doesn't have time in it. The easy equation. I call it the easy equation. All right, this one. What about this one? Vf equals vi plus gt. That equation. Let's see if we have the stuff that dreams are made of in here. Do I have the initial velocity going up? Yup. I do. 50. That's why we calculated. Do I know G? Yup, going up, negative 9.8. Solving for time, do I know the final velocity? 
Uh, I don't know, do we? Yes, we do. What goes up must come down. So going up, we get to the peak, pinnacle, apex, and or zenith, and we stop. This for a brief instant, we stop. And then whoosh, we'll come back. So initial velocity is 50. Final velocity is zero. Mm -hmm. Up here, the, in, the velocity here is zero in the upwards direction. I'm still 50 going across. That never gets changed. But going up stops at zero and comes back down. Sometimes you can actually work these problems from the bottom up or the top down because we talked about that in an earlier video on kinematics. What goes up must come down, and the time up is equal to the time down. They're the same thing. Gravity is affecting it up and down, right? So we could, if we wanted to, make the initial velocity here at the peak, pinnacle, apex, and or zenith zero and make the final velocity when it comes back down to bikini bottom 50. You can do that. In that case, you would use G as a positive 9.8. I'm going to use it as a negative because I'll just stick with the idea that we start with 50 here and we end with zero here. And then we'll turn around and come back. So let's plug some stuff in. All right, final velocity on the way up is zero. Initial velocity on the way up is 50. 50. Plus negative 9.8 because I'm using gravity going up, slowing it down. I use that as a negative. I'm going to solve for t. Negative 50 divided by negative 9.8 is time. The negatives cancel. So they cancel. And that's going to be, you know, it's about 5. But We'll get a little bit better than that because we're better than that. You and I are better than that, okay? We can do this. Okay, 50. We're not amateurs, people. Divided by 9.8. 5.1. So 5.1 seconds is the time that it takes that Krabby Patty to go up, stop. Now, the question is how far it goes, right? Shh, the whole trip. Not how far it goes up and stops, but now it's got to come back down, doesn't it? So what do I do? Well, what goes up must come down, still due to gravity. Multiply that time by two. Multiply this time by two, and we'll get the time for the total trip up and down, back to the, back to the bottom of Bikini Bottom. So times two. 10.2, don't forget to multiply by two. So everybody's gonna do that on your next academic adventure. When I ask you to do one of these, you're gonna forget. I go, mm, and you lose a couple of points. And so don't do that. Multiply by two. 10.2 goes here, seconds, seconds cancel, I get meters. So this comes out to be 186.6, uh, 86.6, 86.6 times 10.2. We get 883, 883 meters. Now, 883 meters is the length of nine football fields. It's a long kick. I mean, you know, Stephen Gaskowski, who has been finally fired from the Patriots, maybe he can hit a 60-yard field goal, 60-meter field goal. This is nine football fields. This is the guy you want on your football team. Doodle Bob. Now, there might be other issues with having him on your team. I mean, Doodle Bob does have some anger issues, but, but he can kick, okay? He can kick. And that's underwater, people, underwater. Hmm, imagine what he do with no water. Six miles. Oh. Okay, so that would be how far we would kick that ball. Now, for kicking the ball up, and it's landing on a surface which is in horizontal, whole new can of worms. Or for, let's say we have a kitty cat. Here's a kitty cat. Cute little kitty cat. Yes, you are. And the kitty cat jumps off the table, launches kitty cat self at an angle, and then comes down below the table level. That's a whole new ball game as well. Um, <sighs> now, now, I'm just going to give you one of those. Thank you. You're welcome, Billy. You're welcome. You're getting angry anyway, so. Uh, okay, all right. I think that will wrap up what we need to know with our uh, projectiles. And um, yeah, that would, that would, that's it. That's what we need to know with projectiles. So we're all good. We're all good. We're all good. Good. And I have a little bit of coffee left. Good.